Hello, welcome to another video. This is a simple limit problem, but I noticed that students would usually try to do something that has to do with infinity. Do not adopt the infinity strategy if x is going to a finite number, okay? The first move you make when the number is not infinity is just plug the number in. And if I plug in one to the top, and the bottom, I'm going to get 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, which gives me 0 over 0. So that is an indeterminate form, which once you get indeterminate form, you know that you can do some algebraic manipulation to take care of the problem. So for this particular problem, there are two ways. One is a special way, and one, the other one is the general way. Now, the special way only works because of the kind of problem you're given, but the general way works every time. So let me show you the special way because of the nature of this problem, and then I'm going to show you the general way on the side, not minding what the problem looks like, it always works. So let's get into it. The first move we're going to make is, look at the bottom, it looks like the square of this is this. So I can treat the bottom as the difference of two squares because one is a perfect square. So I can go ahead and do it this way. I can say that this is the limit as x goes to 1 of the square root of x minus 1 divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. And that tells me this is the limit as x goes to 1 of square root of x minus 1 over, if I write this as the difference of two squares, it's going to be the square root of x minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. See, this is 1 squared. And now this can cancel this out so that my answer will be equal to the limit as x goes to 1 of just 1 over square root of x plus 1. And that gives me 1. If I plug in 1 here over 1 plus 1, let's write 1 plus 1, which is equal to 1 over 2. So this limit is 1 half. Now let's use the universal rule. The only reason this worked was because when I factored the denominator, it matched what was on top. If this number here was 2, it becomes impossible. I cannot cancel them out and it wouldn't work. So now I'm going to show you what you should do whenever you have an expression that involves a radical and you have a finite number here. Remember, if we were dealing with infinity, it would be a different strategy. So the general method says, whenever you have a radical and this is finite, always rationalize the radical. So whatever this is, if this was on, in the bottom here, what you want to do is you want to rationalize. If it's at the top, you rationalize also. So we're going to say this, is, this limit as x goes to 1 of the square root of x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is equal to the same limit as x goes to 1 of the square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1 multiplied by the conjugate of whatever has the, the radical. So x plus 1 divided by x radical plus 1. So we're multiplying here. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to 1 of, if we multiply this by this, remember if you multiply two radicals, the conjugate, it just gives you the square of the first term minus the square of the second term. So on top, you're going to end up with just x minus 1. And in the bottom, what do you end up with? Every time you rationalize, my recommendation is do not distribute the denominator. Okay, only take care of the part that has the conjugate. The other part, leave it that way. So, as you can see, when doing this multiplication, we're going to have x minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1 in the denominator. And we know that 
um, this will cancel the stop part. So we end up with the limit as x goes to 1 over square root of x plus 1. And what do we get? Well, our answer is going to be equal to, you plug in 1, the same answer as you got here, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 1, which is equal to 1 over 2. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.